An Anti-Relationship Slash Anti-Love Guide Chapter 1 Single for one reason or another 1 Lost the fairy tale or never had it in the first place 1 Relationships aren't worth it. They cause too much pain and headaches. I found a few people using the term anti-relationship on the internet. It means I'm not particularly interested in a monogamous relationship right now. This may change later but for now, I'll go it alone or with casual lovers only. The reasons span the spectrum. Some people are born that way. Some people get spurned a few times then turn off. Some people have bad personalities but don't realize it. The anger in the world is monumental. Many people are angry. Many people are trivial, always looking to bicker, playing some one-upmanship game in their minds that they must win. Some people have no money. They're barely getting by, don't have a car so why bother trying to date someone when you're struggling to pay bills. Nowadays, we got gotten cows, men going their own way, and in cells, involuntary celibacy, guys plus the red and black pilled guys who all say women want too much for too little in return so they say I'm not interested in a romantic relationship with anybody. I'm happy by myself. At the other end are the deep people who I think are just overly soppy. These are the people who have been hurt, cheated on, betrayed, etc. Personally, I think every human being that's alive unless you're very, very lucky, has been abused, insulted, betrayed and disrespected. This is a matter of routine if you spend time in that world out there outside your doors. I have people disrespect me all the time. To me that's the way of the world. It's full of assholes looking to try to get one up on anyone, even a stranger they see. There are trivial people who want to put down people they don't like just for the sake of building themselves up for the moment. There are little people in the world who get their kicks out of abusing whatever power and control they think they have over others in an official capacity as their own personal ego trip to impose pain on others to make themselves feel good. The world is full of trivial assholes, men and women alike. I've come across enough nasty girls to lose my idea that females are the fairer sex. At my age, there are no highly idealistic wonderful women out there. Everyone is damaged by living in a world of humans. I was raised on the Bible which taught that all humans are sinners. The Old Testament is full of one tragedy after another, people doing evil things to each other. I understand when somebody says I'm happy alone. I don't want to waste time chasing some golden person that does not exist in real life. I'm not a fan of Whoopi Goldberg but I saw her once talking about being single on her TV show, The View. She said I'm the way I am, I'm not a spring chicken, I like the way I set my place up, I'm comfortable. I'm not going to change it for some guy. What guy would be worth it at her age? She was realistic. She's an older overweight woman, some people would say she's ugly, set in her ways with her own mind. Her potential for romance was probably sucked out of her by real life by the time she was 35. I went on some dating websites and put my real age in. I wouldn't date any of those women that popped up. Romance is for the young. By the time you get past 50, if you're not the most cynical person around, you lived a sheltered life. I don't take things personally anymore. I let them roll off my back and keep moving. The point is that anybody who knows anything knows that the nature of the human being is always on a critical precipice. Anybody can go in either direction at any time. Anybody can act good all the time or just for today then be a bitch or bastard tomorrow. There is no rhyme nor reason to human behavior. You can be abused and end a nasty relationship then the next day meet somebody nice and wonderful or you could be having a great day then some asshole comes around to try to mess you up just because they're such an asshole. No matter how cynical you get, you can't build walls around your heart if you expect to score again. Tons of people do this. They go anti-relationship because of past history when you should just keep going with an open mind that there are good people out there. I heard a girl on the radio who didn't sound older than 25 give an eloquent speech about how she lost the idealism of love which I had never thought of until then, that people lose the fairy tale. 
This is why first loves are so great. They're filled with that dreamy idealism of youth, passion, and love that fade with age, I believe, for several reasons. Youth is a time of excess anyway. Everything is magnified. We are more naive, well-intentioned, and open. Some of us get heartbroken. This forces us to put walls around our hearts in order to protect ourselves emotionally so we are more guarded when we meet new people who we could possibly get involved with. I've seen people acting guarded, aloof and closed without realizing they were like this but their past history of failed relationships and the pain that goes along with it now predisposes them to be so defensive that they scare people off. They not only scare people off. They themselves see that no relationship will ever be perfect the way they want it so they either give up or in the case of many women, go gay. A lot of women give up on guys and go gay because women are generally much more emotionally receptive than men. A lot of people get tired of trying. They meet people they don't really like so after a while they say screw it, I'll create a good life for me and not worry about it. The statistics about women getting married past the age of 35 are horrendous. Men want younger women. A lot of women are very aware of this so as they pass 40, they start to give up on love. On the other hand, there are people who keep trying. Occasionally, you read an article in the newspaper about someone marrying for the seventh time or someone marrying at 75 years old for the first time saying this is the one that will last. A lot of people give up on love but a lot of people still have hope regardless of their age. Lost the fairy tale or never had it in the first place too. I will state some reasons off the top of my head why I think people get cynical about love. 1. Love is not all it's cracked up to be. A lot of people are happier free. A relationship means a compromise of your behavior and freedom. If you analyze the trade-off between the sex and the sacrifice of your time and money, it's not worth it to some people. 2. Some people don't have the emotional need for a relationship. They don't want to be accountable to another person. They're happy by themselves, doing their own thing, making themselves happy. 3. Many people are in a struggle to survive materially or are in some kind of situation that makes romance difficult. They could be living in a low-rent dive where they are ashamed to ask someone out. They could be working six days a week, always working and always tired. They could be ambitious. They could have bad teeth which they can't afford to get cosmetic dentistry done on. They could be divorced and depressed. They could be paying child support and eternally poor. A lot of people are out of the love game for some seemingly innocuous reason. 4. Aging itself saps the spirit of many people as I discuss in my book A Free Spirit Search for Enlightenment. There is a middle-aged type of punchiness or mundanity that a lot of over 40 people get into metaphorically, these lazy ruts where they are set in their ways, don't feel attractive, feel semi-depressed, and don't think anyone would be interested in a middle-aged dud slash frump like themselves. 5. Look in the mirror like I do. I'm not the carefree, dashing, handsome buck of youthful vigor. I am what I am. I am my age. Even though I and anyone can preserve themselves well, aging still takes its cut. Opposite sex people are not attracted to you as much anymore. 6. Except for the internet, it's harder for anyone over 35 to meet new people because the social centers of the world are geared for young people. Once your generation passes 35, you all become a bunch of loners each living in your own fantasy worlds. There is no cohesive group anymore united by the category of youth. The social world as far as meeting someone is geared for youth. You stick out everywhere you go. 7. You might feel alienated and slash or set in your ways. When you live in your own thoughts for a while sharing them with no one, you could get to a point where you think what do I have in common with anyone. I'm set in my ways. I'm so into my own thoughts I couldn't see myself bending to meet another person. 8. Some people just get tired of the game. They don't feel like young hot stuff anymore, they've been hurt before, they've played the games before, they're tired and they just want to live peacefully with their dog or cat without all the hassles of trying to please someone else. 9. 
some people get cynical or contemptuous of life in the modern world and slash or of the opposite gender. I know several guys who have ideas about North American women being a bunch of self-centered, pop culture entertainment, phony glamour brainwashed, uppity bitches thinking they're all that expecting guys to grovel to them because they supposedly got the goods, their bodies, and the guy has to become a trained monkey in order to gain access. This seems to be the game of love as defined by our culture whereas if a guy is sincerely looking for love, he is looking for a true companion, a true, honest friend but so many women out there are putting on airs that he gets cynical, concludes they're all brainwashed phonies and shuts off, perhaps looking for girls in another country to find what he wants. 10. Some people are narcissists. They live for their own pleasure. There is nothing wrong with this as long as you don't use or mistreat other people. The world is generally cold, impersonal, and rude. If you deal with people all day long every day who are ambivalent to you, after a while you conclude there is no love in the world left. Everybody is chasing after their own illusions of success, narcissism, and beauty so why bother trying to date a person who is cold and self-centered anyway? In the final analysis, I believe there are good, kind people out there with both inner and outer beauty but it wears kind of thin when you're dealing with people all day long every day who are either dumpy on the outside or look good on the outside but have terrible, arrogant, bitchy personalities on the inside but they are there. The thing is that you have to have patience. The best you can do is to develop yourself and live a happy life as an individual. It's like Rumi said, you have a certain spiritual essence about yourself. There are a number of people in the world who share this spiritual essence. When you meet one of your soulmates, you both know it provided you kept up with your soul, honored what it told you to do and lived a noble, inspired life up until now not letting the world nor the mundanity of time get you down on life. I'm a bit arrogant in the sense that I believe cool 60-year-old dudes can attract 25-year-olds. This is where men are luckier than women. A 45-year-old woman is generally not gonna attract a younger guy but men can attract younger women throughout their lives so the plight of the single, older girl is that if she wants to fall in love, she can't look at the young bucks, she has to look at guys older than her because they are the only ones realistically interested but at the back of their heads, most guys over 50 are looking to snag a 25 to 32 year old so I understand why this massive sea of over 40 women are cynical about love. I would say your best bets are to join a church and get involved with it. Love Contrarian 1. Love is an ideal, reality isn't. All ideals crumble when you see the real person and when they age. Everybody says they're companions, comfortable with each other in old age but what's the big deal about trading in one spouse for another or adding another spouse as in polygamy? We have archaic views about love in our society. The truth is simple. The more you live as you are the way you were born therefore the more real you are in presenting yourself to the world, the more I and most other people respect you and the more we're attracted to you. Contrary to the cultural myths put forth by the mass media marketing machine, in the real world we all have an inherent intuitive judgment system within ourselves that enables us to see the essence of a person, their souls bared so to speak within a few seconds to minutes after seeing them for the first time. For those of us free enough to not get indoctrinated to look for a capitalist, pop culture caricature of success and happiness, the search for love or sex partners is easy. Just follow your intuition without getting sucked into the clothes a person is wearing, the type of car they drive, the square footage of their houses or how cool they appear to be based on their knowledge and imitation of the current pop culture. This is counterintuitive to the massive marketing machine out there telling girls to color their hair cause they're worth it and to buy into the stereotype that a girl who likes to shop for frivolous stuff is a real cool, happening, liberated chick. The cool image for successful conservative guys is supposedly the guy in the Armani suit, wearing sunglasses, on his cell phone driving around in his expensive car constantly working to build some illusory capitalist empire. For the liberal guys, it's to be a cross between a sensitive wimp and a hippie, eco-tree hugger, granola type with long hair, maybe a ponytail, wire-rimmed glasses with deep, sensitive eyes. Regardless of the image a guy chooses to play that he borrowed from the outside world, 
it's all a pretense to get chicks and hide his insecurities because all guys are basically same underneath the image. It's not that we're purposely dogs. It's just we were born that way. You can never underestimate the roles hormones play in human behavior. Testosterone is the sex hormone for men and women but men have 8 to 10 times more than women. The truth in the love game is the exact opposite of the marketing messages you see on TV. If you want to attract a person of substance, don't try to be trendy and cool based on all the TV commercials that are directed at women's vanity or men's capitalist success and machismo. Be yourself. Be modest. Be who you are. Look at your life as a case study of one and try to do whatever it is that's original and inspired within you that you were born with and you'll have a much greater chance of attracting a worthy soulmate than trying to imitate some image you got from your culture. If you're naturally sensuous and passionate about your life, first of all don't let the world brainwash you. Secondly, be who you were born to be. Don't let them screw with you by turning you into some soulless, nerdy workaholic working for their ideas of success and happiness, sacrificing the real horny, sexy, free, happy you in the process. This has already happened to millions of people. Plenty of young girls are adventurous and free but by the time they're 30, most are either brainwashed to pursue their careers very seriously, looking to have babies and be good mothers or depressed because they haven't found their mythical prince charming yet and they know they isn't exactly getting better, they're getting replaced by younger, fresher girls. There are very few girls over 30 willing to be sensual hedonists for the sensations of it cause that's what they feel but there are a few. If you're presenting some image to the world, you might attract brainwashed people like yourself but from my experience out there, people that are brainwashed by something and not following their true natures the way they were born in their souls always end up crashing and burning in the void of existential emptiness at some point in time so why bother with people like that if you're looking for love? Look for somebody with enough of an identity to try to be artists of their lives. They're stable. They're not like lost souls always looking for some gimmick to fill them up. It'll save you a lot of headaches in the long run. Love Contrarian too. Just about every single person I know around 50 years old or older, men and women alike, lament the fact that they aren't paired up and think that life has passed them by, that their best days for finding love and enjoying life are behind them. Most of us want both deep human connections and free-flowing, unlimited carnal sex but you generally can't get both with one partner in a monogamous relationship. Some people don't even get one of the two in a relationship. What are you supposed to do? I never get too soppy or deep. Romantic love can add to my sense of identity but it can never replace it which is why I beat out just about everybody in the experience of life because I don't get neurotic about things I don't have that society says I should have. So many people destroy themselves either looking for love, because they're not in love or because they're in a horrible relationship. Some of us are too untamed to be in monogamous relationships. Life is lived as it happens day by day. I know at least half a dozen guys who are more interested in their booze and drug hobbies than being family men. Personally I crave the sensations of the upper limits of the human experience. A relationship is only one part of life. I'd say it is or shouldn't be any more than 15% of an individual's life. With all the other activities I do every day, 15% of your energy dedicated to your sweetheart is plenty enough to keep anybody in love with you. A lot of girls are flash and show. They don't want to do much beyond shop and watch gossip shows on TV. If you live for inspired action from the soul as many creative, bohemian types do, nobody can keep up with you or share your experiences anyway, many of which are solitary such as writing, painting pictures, playing an instrument, working out, etc. No matter what, we're all still loners in our heads, ultimately answering only to ourselves. Nobody seems to want to admit this existential fact of the human condition. Everybody is always trying to act like they're deeply connected to some in crowd or other people somewhere when the truth is that survey studies bear out that most couples don't even know each other all that well based on comparing self-analysis questionnaires with how the person's spouse evaluates him or her. In my own family in the past, I called relationships a circular affair. 
sometimes there was peace and intimacy in the house. Other times, I felt like we were all on different planets. My conclusion about life for most people is this endless ebb and flow of human relationships going around in a circle fluctuating between moments of intimacy followed by long periods of generic living in tur sprinkled with hate and triviality as someone gets angry and takes it out on a supposed loved one. I only had the true, comfortable feeling of pure love a few times when I was young and too untamed to appreciate it. Very few of us live romantic lives with deep, profound soulmates regardless of how long we've been married so I say get real. Accept who you are, accept your life. Those idealistic romantic visions you have in your head may come true or may not. In any event, when you wake up every morning, the only person you really answer to is yourself. Do you make a conscious effort to earn your self-respect every day? How can you be a great lover if you don't respect yourself first and anybody 10 pounds or more overweight doesn't respect themselves? If they did, they wouldn't be overweight. Love Contrarian 3 Many marriages are not about love but possession and control. Only a tiny few marriages are fulfilling the partners. To institutionalize a loving relationship, to bring the church and state into it and to create penalties for withdrawing it at a later time, is a part of the downfall of society. How can someone be expected to commit themselves to another person for the rest of their lives when they're young and immature? Who knows what lies ahead or how the two will change in their attitude to life and each other? According to the mental illness of the institution of marriage, it is better to continue a marriage which both partners hate than to bring it to a natural conclusion and free the partners to find love elsewhere. Children are punished if they are not born into a family made up of a married couple by becoming called bastards. Love should be the bond which holds two people in a relationship not a piece of paper and a law created by the government and the church. Most marriages are not based on love. They are based on financial security, habit, social conformity, friendship, loneliness, and the fear of being alone. Our love for one does not have to diminish our love for another. We can love several people simultaneously. No one person can provide everything another person will need for the rest of their lives. If we were born into a world that didn't fret over monogamy, the pain caused by relationships and sex would not exist. The misuse and manipulation of sex by religion and the media has led to massive guilt, fear, and resentment in our attitude to sex. Once you have a marriage certificate, you are no longer supposed to have any sexual experience with anyone except your official partner. This denies you from experiencing who you are in your full, true nature. We want to impose our blueprint on others and only if people conform to that do we love them, or rather think we love them. Denial always stimulates an obsession with whatever you are denying. Sexual denial is huge. You try to suppress your sexual feelings because of fear and guilt but you can't. Sex comes out one way or another. Sexually frustrated people often become hateful, angry people as a compensation for their unexpressed sexuality. Never be afraid to experience who you really are away from brainwash. Marriages in general have become a prison of denial based on conditional love. Love is about loving without conditions of any kind. Why do we have legal contracts for it called marriage licenses? Love is never about the possession and ownership of another person. Love is not about emotional control or dependence on how you're feeling or how your love object is treating you. It's always there regardless of the emotions of the moment. True love is doing what's best for your love object even if it's tough love that seems to hurt them at the time. People can love more than one person at the same time. Love in its purest, most magical form, has no ifs or buts or maybes. Love is to desire what is best for another, even if it is not what we wish to happen. The greatest love anyone can have for another is to let them go if that is what is best for them. Love is to love someone so completely that nothing they can ever do could destroy the way you feel about them. Two whole people respect and encourage the other's right to express their uniqueness. If you have expectations of someone, you will probably be disappointed. Once we let go of expectations, we are free for anything to happen. Relationships founded on unconditional love with no expectations of each other are the only great ones. Chapter 2 
single for one reason or another too. It's simple, we live in a world of narcissism more than ever. When I was younger where we had our summer cottage, a couple of artists lived in the area. They were single older men which was rare in the 1960s. Everybody was expected to marry back then. They were doing their own thing. I went over there several times. They had a bunch of paintings, sculptures and were making furniture by hand. These guys were artists in the true sense of the word. They felt a strong urge to do their own thing, express their natural energy in their own way. I was brought up a Catholic. I remember this statement. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, lovers. 2 Timothy 3 2 to 3 4. Nowadays, with social media on the internet, the message is to be a star. Go online, post your meaningless junk up about your frivolous life then get attention from strangers. It never ends. It's getting worse. A lot of people want admiration, easy money, an easy life, to play video games all day long, gamble, etc. Many of these people are not capable of romantic love. When you're brought up watching intimate strangers on a screen, you do not develop close, intimate relationships with people. I think we're heading straight towards rotten as the human race, partially due to the internet which encourages narcissism, self-love, and masse. There is a documentary called Bad Vegan about this lazy slob of a guy who refuses to work, marries a nice, naive girl who runs a vegetarian restaurant in New York City, ends up plundering $1.5 million from her then stealing $400,000 from her mother. He's a totally selfish guy. How many people like him exist in the real world? Why don't people get into relationships? Because they're selfish pigs who would rather live for themselves than share their lives with anybody. Simple mental illness, a slob, a geek, an asshole. When I was coming of age in the 1980s, we didn't have the internet. There was one mainstream culture. Young people went out looking to pair up. Nowadays, with the internet, we got everything. We got guys playing video games all day long. We got gamblers gambling on poker, sports, etc. We got instant porn and cyber sex. You can order food and have it delivered to your door. You got forums and groups spouting strange ideas. You got the MGTOWs, the red-pilled and black-pilled guys not looking for relationships because they think all girls are bitches. I cover these anti-relationship guys in my man book. What about poor people? You got this squeaky clean image of success and coolness on TV then in real life, you got a guy who's a coal miner, rents a room in a boarding house, is struggling just to pay bills, maybe has stinky socks, etc. Women have always had high expectations but in real life guys are working average jobs to pay bills. As a guy, how do you expect to have confidence in dating when you don't own a car because you don't have the money? When I went to college, I remember meeting many girls who thought they were queen of the walk, they deserved some rich guy's son with a sports guy studying to be a lawyer. This twain will never meet. Average guys trying to get by versus the delusional chicks with their romantic fantasies. I saw the 1939 movie So Good. Invitation to Happiness with Irene Dunn and Fred McMurray. The idea of the movie was that she was the Rick girl lady, he was the tramp making a living as a heavyweight boxer. It's a stereotype. Women hold themselves out as ladies. In real life, they want the dapper dandy, not the welder or the truck driver. They were raised on these fantasies that don't match in real life. Colleges are full of these women. Many end up alone. Romantic love is not everything. After you get enlightened, freedom is not some hippie adventure of anything goes. It's you choosing to follow the music inside rather than the pull of your society to take a dull job, get married, have kids, and buy stuff. There's no choice. You know you must honor yourself each and every day. Each person has a destiny to pursue that exists independently of other people. 
it is what you would do even if you had all the love and money you want. Love is only real if your lover supports your destiny. Romantic love for its own sake is not enough. You answer to the person in the mirror every day or at least you should. If you're tapped into your true nature, you shouldn't feel lonely much because you're happy living your life. You attract potential lovers this way. Generic people looking for heroes. Very few of us have deep, intimate connections that stir our souls except with our pets and kids and they are more maternalistic than a pure, equal, loving, soulmate slash kindred spirit love affair. Most of our relationships are either superficial or symbiotic, including marriages. There are very few mythological soulmate relationships as love is portrayed in movies and literature simply because most of us are generic people. How can we expect to have a great soul-stirring love affair when we are not inspired or original enough to stir that sensibility in another person such that they see us this beautiful, mythical, bohemian, lusty, sensual creature that is the object of their desires? It isn't happening much. Given up on love. The woman I would kill for doesn't exist. I belong to Bridegrooms Anonymous. Whenever I feel like getting married, they send over a lady in a housecoat and hair curlers to burn my toast for me. Dick Martin If you give up on yourself as so many people do after a midlife divorce, you will either never attract anyone again or end up with another generic, mundane dud like the one you've become. Active people out there doing things attract like-minded souls. Mundane people who just work and watch TV either end up alone or with someone like them. The choice is yours. Many people, especially guys, consciously give up on love after a divorce because they feel a relationship always leads to the same mundane comfortable old shoes together thing plus the fact that they were cleaned out in the divorce settlement and the sex wasn't all that great either so they simply develop a simpler, more peaceful lifestyle where they will work, pay the child support, drink on the side or have another similar hobby and either go for casual relationships or stick with the sex industry to get their rocks off in a hassle-free situation with no strings attached. I know several guys who have given up on love, live for themselves and strive to please themselves. They look like typical middle-aged guys packing an extra 20 pounds. They don't take any extra care to try to look attractive to the opposite sex and it shows because they look like mooks who couldn't attract a chick if their lives depended on it. They're just generic guys living out their lives for themselves, for their kids and maybe for their mother and that's it. There are plenty of these guys around everywhere which is one of the reasons there's a glut of single middle-aged and older women on the market, a lot of their counterpart single middle-aged and older men purposely take themselves out of the market leaving very few single and available older men for these older women so if you're an older woman, you'd better try to look and act vivacious if you want to score with an interesting older guy because there are so few of them around. I have friends and acquaintances who are at my middle age and older and countless stories I've read and seen in the media host a large subculture of people who've tried their hand at love, perhaps gotten married and had kids then got divorced and tried again, their spouses cheated on them so they left, have had various problems with their lovers or just haven't found the perfect soulmate love. They get to a point where they get tired, the hassles of love seem to drain them, they wonder if all the baggage that goes with it is worth it that maybe a life of masturbation and occasional casual flings is a lot more peaceful than love because the price seems so high, the sacrifice of some freedom plus the potential of love problems which could take a high toll on you if you invest so much energy into something that backfires on you. I can't say give up on love. Anybody can fall in love at any age if you take care of yourself physically, are open to new explorations and act like you love life even if you don't. I saw a spinster on a TV show, a fat woman who was a successful manager at some administrative job who said she got her thrills out of reading romance novels only she wasn't so crude about it, she said it was just a harmless escapist thing nevertheless we can't help but feel sorry for this ugly fat old thing who will never know the touch of a man again if she ever did in the first place. I've known a few older guys really desperate for love whereas I function as well alone as in a relationship. It seems like a lot of middle-aged people, men, and women alike have given up on love because they've had so many problems in love before and now seem alienated in the modern world of dating where they see all these images of cool, 
sophisticated people that they feel they don't measure up or feel it's so hard to go out into the dating world which could be sheer torture especially if you're like me, I feel I got it all figured out already, been there, done that, nothing phases me any more so. When you get right down to it, I got my own agenda and beyond that, I'm a pretty dull guy because almost nothing in the world interests me except for the few things I like to do so to a lot of people I would be a boring guy because I don't want to go out to shopping malls, amusement parks, movie theaters, and do all those stupid frivolous things that most of the mainstream does to have fun so I'm down on typical dates. Even if I fall in love with somebody, I still hate to do all that pop culture stuff that defines a mainstream date. And then there's the old let sleeping dogs lie type thing. You get set in your ways. You know what you like, you don't want to go around doing these silly dates all to supposedly create an intimate bond with someone you're lukewarm about anyway. A lot of guys and gals just can't be bothered. Once you've been in love a few times, it kind of loses its luster. It's not as special as it was when you were a love-struck 18-year-old. A lot of people also have mixed messages about modern-day love. One one hand, is the goody two-shoes puritanical side. On the other, it seems as though everybody's so casual about it, that nobody wants a monogamous traditional love, that girls are so liberated and there's so much sexual etiquette to deal with like the problems of STDs, the use of condoms, sex outside of matrimony, casual sex, who pays for what, how demer should an independent woman act, etc. All these things plus all the jerks out there make it tough for a lot of people who want to bother any more plus the fact that we live in a disposable society where we've got all the tools to live great lives alone except the need for intimate love with another human being which could take minor status if you find other things that inspire you or make you feel good. We got TVs, VCRs, porno videos, booze, good food, romance novels, cheap red light districts in foreign countries and even pets to comfort us but most of us still get lonely and still want love so I say never close the door on love. No matter how old you are, take care of yourself so you look good for your age, get out and circulate around and you never know when you will meet someone around your age who's going through the same things you are and needs someone like you to love so never give up the dream because it will be a drag to end up alone in your later golden years even though there will always be a subculture of people who prefer the single life no matter what. If necessary, take a break for a while but don't give up on love permanently. Love is expendable. Some old philosopher once said love is the delusion that one woman differs from another. All nice women are the same, they just want some loving. There isn't nothing complicated about it. It's like what an old buddy once told me. He said he starts falling in love with someone then turns around and there's another pretty one there. He said there are so many pretty girls out there he didn't know who to fall in love with. I told him about my love at first sight experience and told him if it didn't hit him yet, when it happens, he will know cause it will be a bolt of lightning to his soul but even this is fleeting because there are at least 100 girls out there that send a lightning bolt to your soul when you see them for the first time. I've been in love several times in my life and have been around friends who have been in love then broke up. Overall, I think they took it worse than I did, doing all kinds of stupid things to try to deal with it, things ranging from depression to the rebound to even suicide in one case. Even though I still have memories of lost loves, I've come to the realization that there are plenty of nice people out there looking for love so no matter what happens, as cynical and cruel as it may sound, I'm now at a point where I realize that there's more than one soul made for all of us. I now know that if something doesn't work out, I can move on and find somebody else. Even though I may fall in love, I can just as easily roll over and start all over again. The point is that no matter how good it feels, know in your heart that you can always start over again if something happens like they cheat, leave, or die. Our culture romanticizes and idealizes love with one person exclusively for life but the truth is that we're tough and even though it's nice to be loved by this magical person, we can just as well get along without her and besides, life goes on no matter what so even though it's fine to be a romantic fool. Keep one foot on the ground and don't go all nutty when you have your first disagreement or your lover dumps you. When you look at the animal kingdom, 
you see that mates are expendable and replaceable so stay stable if you happen to lose one. Chapter 3 Some people are not relationship material. Types of people Most people are not that complicated once you peel away the phony exterior. You're looking for the heart, soul, and essence of a person. What makes them tick? What is their motivation? What inspires them when they get out of bed in the morning, if anything? First off, I generally believe that you can read a person's essence very quickly by looking at their face and body. That's their biography. Youth is a time of grace but shortly after the age of 25, the way they live becomes what they look like. If you take care of your body or don't take care of it, it shows. Your body is a measure of self-respect or lack of it. In the face, facial beauty is not the issue. It's the amount of natural joy imprinted in the face. Someone can be blessed with good looks but still have a glum face or a plain face because they're not living a happy, inspired life. When you see true joy for life in a face, you know it but it's not common. If you want an in-depth look at what makes a person happy, refer to my free spirits book. It's about knowing the natural standard on how you should live your life and releasing that energy every day. Truly happy people are happy within themselves by what they do. They don't care about projecting a certain image onto others because they don't have to. They're happy as is. This is one of my criteria in judging people, are they happy as is because they know their true identity and constantly release that energy or are they projecting some kind of image because they're not happy enough just being themselves. If I see a guy with earrings on, a girl overdressed with trendy clothes and colored hair, somebody driving a cheesy sports car, somebody who's a name dropper, a show off, a big mouth or a brag guard, they are consciously doing these things to try to get attention from others for one reason or another. If you're happy with yourself, you don't need to try to act cool, high or mighty to get others to notice you because you're happy within yourself. Look at the motivation, do they live by soul, their real selves, or image, some fake self they're manufacturing about themselves. If I'm looking for a wife, I'm looking for a girl being her real self, someone who has discovered the beauty within herself and lives to release that energy without having to go around trying to act like some fashion diva or something like that. Having said all that, I'll end it by saying most people have a simple motivation behind them. They pick one thing or it picks them and that's what they live by. It could be money, status, love, religion, pro basketball, TV, food, booze, etc. Most people really are simple. Try to figure out what turns their crank for real and you've found the soul of the person. Here are a few stereotypes. Artist. Thinks life has a deep meaning, too self-absorbed with being profound rather than living for joy day by day. Athlete. Lives to release physical energy. Big dude. May try to intimidate people by his size. Acts stupid to fool people but usually has average intelligence. Cheapo. Too cheap to spend money on anything. Complainer, bitch. Elitist nag. Could physically hurt you because she'll take a fit if she doesn't get her way. Couch potato. Always wants the easy way out, something for nothing. Dreamboat. Funny, good looking, complimentary, has money, likes sex. Don't exist much in the real world. Grumpy. Cynical, hates the world. Hypochondriac slash winner. Someone always acting sickly as an excuse for being too wimpy to live a gutsy life. Ice queen. No fun, humorless snob. Joker. Tries to make everything seem smooth by telling jokes. Never serious. Mr. Anxiety. Always worried that the sky is about to fall in. Mr. Energy. Wants sex all the time. Mr. Money Bags. Thinks money is the key to happiness, having lots of things. Mr. Nice Guy. Friendly enough but don't expect a leader or a sexual dynamo. Mr. Religion. Living a limited life bowing down to some creed. Good for him but he is brainwashed. Mr. Sensitive. Nice guy, family man, 
conformist but wimpy and nerdy. Mr. Status Thinks flaunting material superiority in front of others will get him attention, respect, and a good feeling inside. Mr. Superficial, noncommittal. No backbone, no identity, nothing definite. No direction, no decisions. Mrs. Dramatic. Way over the top. New age types. Need wacky ideas to give themselves a sense of worth. Psychologist slash intellectual. Mr. Know-it-all, acts like he knows everything, always analyzing you. Straight, strict, drill sergeant. Boring guy still brainwashed by achievement motivation he was taught in grade school. Playing some illusory game of notches in his belt. Always serious, always competing. The baby. Acts helpless to get sympathy. The dreamer. Doesn't live in the real world. The exploiter. Uses who he can. Cons people. The prosecutor. Too many questions. The seducer. Thinks that sex will make it all better. Wild guy or gal. Drinking all the time and doing stupid things because they have no real stable identity. Fun for a while but risky. Wimp, doormat. Is easily led. So desperate for friendship, they'll do anything to keep it. Self-sabotage red flags. It's wise to take a look at yourself and ask if you sabotage your relationships. Quite often, people do it subconsciously, unwilling to confront themselves as to the why of it all. I won't get too deep here except to say that you should check these red flags over and ask yourself if any of them apply to you. Hate yourself or at least think that you're a lowlife, no-talent generic piece of flesh. You cling to a Cinderella, Sleeping Beauty, or Prince Charming fantasy. Expect too much in a first date or the first few minutes. Give it time. Live up to your parents' expectations, i.e. get married before you're 30. Get sucked into an arranged introduction by your parents then stick with the guy out of obligation. Subconsciously repeat your parents' unhappy relationship through yours. Date a married man and think he will leave his wife. Usually, they don't. Deep down, you feel that you don't deserve to be happy and if you are, something bad will happen to you. Hold yourself back career-wise because you think it makes you look unfeminine. You blame yourself for everything that goes wrong in a relationship. Unwilling to settle slash compromise enough to date most prospective suitors. Angry and antisocial in general for whatever reason. Looking to marry up in social class. Refuse to date someone with less formal education than you. You're fat to avoid intimacy. Refuse to date people younger or older than you. You eat to deal with emotional problems. Move too quickly in a relationship. Booze. Dress like a china doll and act like one. Put too much emphasis on looks. Too obsessed with finding him slash her. Stay in a bad relationship because you're afraid to be alone. Date a guy in prison so you can't have intimacy. Long distance relationship. Internet relationship as opposed to the real thing. Hold unrealistic expectations. Get depressed because of lack of success. Go out with an expectation of another night of losers to meet. Aren't satisfied being alone by yourself. You're attracted to men who abuse you. Constantly criticize all your past lovers in your mind to yourself. Let people cheat on you and otherwise treat you bad. Pressure your new beau about commitment. Unwilling to open up to trust anyone. Once you find someone, you stop trying to be a great lover. Amorophobia, fear of romance because it means risk and commitment. You feel that you can catch any man. You analyze your relationship too much. So afraid of rejection that you remain socially passive. Cling to the belief that there is only one soulmate out there. Willing to have sex too willingly to keep someone. Engage in one night stands looking for Mr. Goodbar. Put yourself on a lofty pedestal of narcissism. Work out some unresolved conflict in your relationships with men. Seek out troubled types to mother and rescue. Make excuses for yourself not to go out. 
treat romance as a logical enterprise with a checklist of needs a man must satisfy. Not willing to give up some of your freedom and independence. Overly romantic belief that love will solve all your problems. Look at love as a material means of acquisition. You're looking for someone who will take care of you. You're looking for someone to take care of slash control. Chapter 4 Being abandoned makes some people lose trust in love. Abandonment issues in love. If you read women's magazines trying to act serious or watch psychobabble TV talk shows geared for women, you'll soon realize that aside from fear of life and food issues, the next most salient topic is what they call abandonment issues or fear of abandonment which is a woman's fear of being alone based on all the times her father, boyfriends, and others stood her up and left her in her life. These abandonment memories are always there barely beneath the conscious mind in the subconscious warning her that all men are pigs, they will abandon her, either telling her to stay safe in her little solitary island away from men so she can't be hurt or it will tell her to keep a tight grip on this guy she's with now because she's nothing without a man and she'll fall to pieces if she has to go it alone again. This is what the psychobabble says. It's one of the reasons I think that a great many women are lost souls, because they buy into all this phony psychobabble these phony gurus called psychologists are telling them about how neurotic, Scared and messed up they are based on events in their past when the truth is that life is an ongoing journey. You create it as you go along. You don't look back much if at all. I can't down psychobabble totally because I know one guy whose father abandoned him and his mother when he was six years old and he's now a compulsive workaholic who equates making money with security. All he does is work seven days a week. Money is his way to fill that hole of emptiness he has from being abandoned as a kid or at least that's how he explained it to me. He's trying to put a buffer zone around his heart with money so he won't feel the pain of being left without a safety net anymore. His mother had to work two jobs so he was always home alone. It's like he wants to be a big shot. He wants other people to recognize him as a wealthy guy, a player, a big time operator, a cool, successful guy. He doesn't seem to realize that what others think doesn't matter, that he has to live to please himself. This is his Achilles heel. According to him, he knows he's messed up, blames it all on the abandonment by his father and can't seem to help who he is. I live for my own pleasure. I don't particularly care about impressing others or what they think of me but this guy lives his life around getting others to think he's a VIP. I think the father's abandonment warped him to the extent that he went to opposite extreme to protect himself from having it ever happen again. He's now a narcissist. No normal person hangs photos of himself on the walls of his home or puts his awards and trophies up on display in his own house but this guy does and when I asked him why, he didn't seem to get that I was trying to tell him that it's silly. Life exists every morning when you create it not by building monuments to yourself for others to supposedly admire and be impressed by. He's got these old relics on his wall from 20 years ago when he was in his heyday. He should just clean it all out and live for today. Most single women past the age of 25 have been wounded by at least one guy who stole their hearts then left it in pieces for them to pick up and start all over again. Many women have abandonment issues, desperately afraid of a guy leaving them. They've been hurt before and don't want to live through it again so they do either one of two things. Put walls up and start to see all guys as dogs. They will do anything to stay in a relationship regardless of how bad it is. Let's face it, most guys are dogs, at least in their minds. Guys are into sex more so than relationships and with booze, drugs, sports, cars, golf, cards and other things to keep them occupied, all in all. They're not great lovers so most girls don't get the love they really want but then again, most girls are terrible lovers too. They just lay there. They never take proactive action. The married ones feel neglected, the single ones past 25 and the divorced ones have all been hurt before so many develop unconscious shields against men, retreating into their little shells, living their comfortable lives that take no risks in extending their boundaries to go out and meet new guys. 
The thing about women is that they need intimacy more so than men so they often find pseudo-mates or substitute mates to keep them comforted and this keeps them in their little shell so they don't have to go out to meet new guys and risk possible rejection and abandonment. The biggest pseudo-mates for women are their children, their pets, their parents, their girlfriends, a member of the clergy, their therapist, their hairdresser, a gay guy, the church choir, a defective, loser, wimpy boyfriend they don't really love, etc., anything that gives them emotional comfort that doesn't require them to face the possibility of being in a relationship with a man they really like because they've been hurt before and fear the possibility of this happening again. It's like an electric shock. One good jolt and you're scared off to electricity for life. It's the same with relationships for some people. After one bad experience, they get gun-shy and strive to avoid new relationships in order to not have to deal with the possibility of another breakup. The hurt is so painful that they find substitutes for possible future relationships with new men because they don't want to ever go through that again so the way they deal with it too is to subconsciously screen out men, pretending to be looking but finding substitute love which gives them just enough emotional comfort to stay satisfied but it's not the real love they want therefore it's wrong. If you're over and over 30 single and find yourself living with your cat or showering all your love onto your kids with barely anything left, you could be suffering from abandonment issues, fearing rejection so much that you don't even bother to look for a new relationship anymore and the funny thing is that this could all be done at a subconscious level. If you're married and start to get real possessive, controlling and jealous of your man because he's so independent and shows disdain for your pettiness from time to time, it could be that you fear getting abandoned by him so much on a subconscious level that you're your own worst enemy by nagging him and doing trivial things to try to reel him in such that you eventually alienate him and he leaves you. The solution is to be your own person, strong within yourself, give yourself a good chance for love, give it your all but if it doesn't work, don't blame yourself, don't fall to pieces. Stay stable, know that failed love doesn't necessarily have anything to do with you, it just shows you weren't compatible with that particular person so don't give up on love. Get out there, circulate and keep going on in your quest to find a true soulmate. Many people don't find their true soulmates until well on into old age after several marriages so the morale is no matter how bad the hurt, if you want true love in life, you won't get it sitting around feeling that life has passed you by. You have to get out there and circulate. I've seen people fall in love for the first in their 60s after several failed marriages. It can happen as long as you take care of yourself as you age. Abandonment websites. Try hashtag 616.85852 at the library. Abandonment.net. Blended-families.com slash child hyphen abandonment hyphen issues. BPD411.org slash abandonance.html. Elusivei.com slash side 4882 hyphen abandonment hyphen issues dot html. Newliving.com, dealing with abandonment issues. Prodigalzong.com slash qa slash abandonment underscore issues dot htm. Reinventingmyself.com slash abandon dot html. Chapter 5. An Anti-Relationship Website Guide. Watch a cynical guy on love on YouTube. Find the YouTube channel JREX918, the guy with glasses. Find his videos where he talks about how fake love is, that everyone wants something. I really like him talking because he's trying to be honest about what's natural to him unlike some pickup artist trying to come off like a cool dude. Anti-marriage websites. As far as I can gather, feminist lesbians are anti-marriage. Single guys don't care either way. Most probably think they'll get married at some point in time. On Married.org, The Alternatives to Marriage Project, Brooklyn, New York. Daphne.palomar.edu slash marriage slash marriage underscore 2b.htm, sex and marriage, marriage rules, the problems with three forms of marriage, including polygamy. Don't-marry.com. Feministing.com. Elabri.org slash Swiss slash blog slash Laffery hyphen evangelical hyphen quarterly dot pdf, Paul, anti-marriage, anti-sex, ascetic.
Anti-relationship websites. Aish.com slash society work slash society slash friend underscore or underscore f.o.e. Collegelove.tblog.com. GSHots.com slash humor slash AR contract.htm, the anti-relationship contract, to guarantee no strings are attached. Louis248.blogspot.com. Madly in love with hme.com, self-love. Seacoastonline.com slash calendar slash 0721205 slash single slash 53. Urbandictionary.com slash define.php question mark term equal sign anti hyphen relationship.